So Dagmar, most people would agree that solidarity is a very important component to the healthy functioning of a political community. But once you start to ask questions like, what is solidarity, or how is solidarity generated or maintained, the question starts to seem much more difficult. So I have two simple questions for you. What is solidarity, first of all, and how do we get it? What yeah. do we have to do to create solidarity, and what do we have to do to maintain it? So I think, so I think I'm, I'm going to start with what solidarity is, right? Um, because that might give an indication of how we can get it. Um, so I guess solidarity must have some kind of effective component. So we must feel something towards those we are in solidarity with. Um, some kind of bond. And for most people it probably involves some kind of trust. So we, we trust to somehow not be um, abused by those we are in solidarity with and they trust us not, not to abuse them or not to patronize them. Um, and I guess we care about those we are in solidarity with. Right? But is solidarity different than from feelings of love, for example, that I have towards my family members? So is solidarity a specifically political kind of feeling? So it's, it's certainly different from love, I, I would hope. Um, so it's certainly less all-encompassing. I don't care about the person in all her, her or his aspects. Um, and I think it's, it must be, like nowadays, certainly it must be a care amongst strangers, people I don't know, people I don't have any face-to-face -face interaction with. Um, you say maybe. people I don't know or people that I don't have face-to-face -face interaction with, so people that are outside of my immediate circle yes. of, of contact. But in order to have some sort of bond of solidarity with someone or some, in order to feel solidarity with someone else, do I have to share something in common with them? Yes, I think so. So I, th I think this is where we disagree, right? Because um, I, I think we must share. So there must, first of all, be a basic reason to care and um, to need to be cared for. So we share vulnerabilities. And because we share vulnerabilities, we also share interests, probably. I think that would be enough to... to and what do you mean by we share vulnerabilities? Because that seems to be a central a central component. So if I think of pol political solidarity, um, everyone's autonomy can be undermined, right? Um, we can all be dominated, as, as a term, um, by political institutions, um, so dominated beyond that, which is reasonable. And, and so we need, to, we need the help of others to protect ourselves from, from this kind of oppression, let's say it. Um, that's that's one vulnerability. Are there, I mean, are there other types of vulnerability that might be important there? So you talk about a vulnerability to being oppressed or dominated by political forces. I mean, a lot of times when I think about solidarity, at least I think about it in the context, for example, of a healthcare system. So we have a certain solidarity with other people who we enter into certain kinds of relationships that allow us to form things like the, the NHS. And that seems to address a different kind of vulnerability, yep. yes. a bodily vulnerability. Yes. So I think we, we share with all human beings a lot of different kinds of vulnerabilities, bodily and psychologically. Mm -hmm. um, I would guess, it would be my guess that they all also come into the political solidarity. Mm -hmm. right? um, because we want a working health system as well mm -hmm. in a political community. We want uh, safety from war because we're all vulnerable to mm -hmm. the effects of war. Um, we probably want laws that protect our physical and psychological health. Mm -hmm. um, but we also are, I think, in, within a community, we are, we share that we can be dominated by the same kind of institutions. Mm -hmm. And we depend on each other yeah. in order to, to protect ourselves. Mm -hmm. So you've talked about solidarity as a kind of feeling of trust and dependence as well. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. care. And care. What does it mean? Can you say a little bit more about what solidarity actually does? What function, concretely speaking, it serves within a political community? What does solidarity make possible that wouldn't be possible without those feelings, without that bond? Um, it, the community itself would be the short answer. <coughs> so 
I think because I care about people, I'm prepared to sacrifice some advantage mm -hmm. in order to confer some benefits on them. And um, that's, that's the old Aristotelian view. I'm also probably prepared to make compromises when we think about um, how we want our community to be governed. I'm prepared to take interests of others into account. Mm -hmm. um, that's, I think, on the in the political sphere, a very fundamental thing because it kind of gives us a vision of social peace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How important is this idea of sacrifice to, to solidarity? I mean, in, in, from a certain perspective, it seems that sacrifice would be the central component because what is solidarity without the willingness to sacrifice something of myself or something of my own interests or something even of my own well-being for the well-being, the interests of, the, of another? Mm. So, yeah, so I, I, I would agree. I, I think it is a central component. Um, I think I would find it strange if someone told me, well, I'm in solidarity with these guys, but I'm not prepared to sacrifice anything. So sh sure, it's sacrifice is essential. I don't think it's the only thing. And can you give some concrete examples of that? Are there any, I mean, can you think of any sort of sacrifices that we make that are indicative of a solidarity within our national political community or our local political communities? or even our international political community? So, ideally, um, we pay taxes. Um, obviously, not everybody does that. Um, and if we, if, I think if there's solidarity, we pay taxes, um, not ha maybe not happily. Happily is not the word I'm looking for, but. We willingly. We, willingly, yeah. um, we agree that it's important um, if, if we also can trust the system to distribute taxes mm -hmm. in the way that it goes to the people or to the projects mm -hmm. that need it. Um, internationally, there's not, there's no, I think we're politically not, not well enough set up mm -hmm. to have kind of political, institutional, institutionalized solidarity. But we do a lot internationally. Um, um, we have protest movements that, that fight for the rights of those who are oppressed mm -hmm. globally. Um, we have, I, I would think, some anti-capitalist movements mm -hmm. are probably an expression of solidarity mm -hmm. movements. Right? And is that the same kind of, sol so the solidarity that I would express for somebody living on the other side of the world, for example, a protest that I would take part in that relates to an event on the other side of the world, is that the same kind of solidarity that I have with my neighbor, for example, or my uh, a, a fellow citizen or a fellow resident of the city where I live? So I, th I think um, people's views differ on, on this. Um, we might think that there are different degrees of being, feeling um, bound to people. Mm -hmm. right? And I might feel more at home with the people that I know better, that I have yeah. more contact with. So there might be a stronger effective bond. Um, and that might mean that I'm prepared to sacrifice a bit more. Mm -hmm. So there might be a difference in degrees, but I would think it, it expresses the same kind of, the same mm -hmm. type of care. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you think there are good reasons for differences in the degree of solidarity, the degree of feeling, and also the degree of, of sacrifice? I remember a quote from Christine Lagarde, who is, I think, president of the, or director of the, of the IMF. Yeah. Um, and it was something along the lines of she feels more for people who are starving in sub-Saharan Africa than she does for Greeks who by global standards are still living in relative, in relative comfort or something like that. And that seemed on the one hand to be a statement saying that in fact a uh, more universal kind of solidarity was perhaps more important than in this case some kind of European solidarity that she was expected to show as a French citizen speaking about other, other Europeans? Um, so, I understand that, that there, so I, I think to some degree it's just a fact of our psychology, right? Um, and emotions and feelings, um, we, we can kind of create them to some extent, we can tell ourselves narratives to some extent, but to another extent there, kind of they develop outside of our direct control. And so I think it just happens to the, be the case that I probably, you, you like to hear this, I probably feel more solidarity towards you to, than towards a stranger that I don't know at all. I do like that, yes. 
that doesn't mean that I might not at the same time realize that I have to sacrifice more for someone who's worse off even though they're further removed. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. um, and I'm still motivated to do that through yeah. solidarity. So our project is really about the, the idea of Europe. And so yeah. Europe as a philosophical concept, but also Europe as a philosophical project and as a political project as well. Yeah. And so we, we talk a lot now about European solidarity or the lack of European solidarity. And oftentimes when solidarity gets discussed, it's discussed in terms of sort of national boundaries. So solidarity is something that exists within the boundaries of a nation state or with even within more narrowly within the boundaries of an, of an ethnic community. So mm -hmm. multiculturalism is often discussed as a sort of threat to, to solidarity. Um, so I wonder, is it possible to have these kind of bonds of solidarity, this kind of sacrifice outside of the context of a nation state? Yes. Yes. Um, That's a bit of a setup. I, I, know, yes. I know your answer already. But. Yes. Um, so I, th I, I wouldn't even know from which direction to, to, to address that question because there's so, so much wrong with the idea mm -hmm. that it's bound to an, a national community. Um, a, I guess, so we've created, so national solidarity is an artificial thing. It's something that we created as response to a problem of alienation at some point in history. Can you explain what you mean by, by alienation? So I think, so this is Durkheim's line, pretty much. Um, so Durkheim thinks, um, probably in earlier times when people were less mobile, we were stuck in our little villages, and you were the son of your father, and um, we automatically felt at home in our communities, we felt we belonged to our communities, we maybe didn't even have a sense of a self distinct from our community. Um, with increased mobilization, which also has to do with industrialization, but it also comes at the point of the creation of the nation state, people um, lose this, this, this given bond with their villages. Mm -hmm. they, there's a danger of them feeling alienated, of being anonymous amongst other people who are anonymous. And this is perceived as a threat, because it's threatening social security, yeah. because we need this, this bond. So, I mean, would we say there's something sort of alienating about yeah. city life, about urban initially, life? Initially, I initially, think. Init yeah. I think initially that was a problem. Um, and so we wanted a feeling of community, and we wanted this feeling of community to be roughly in the boundaries of whatever we in envisaged our nation state to mm -hmm. be like. And there's a history of how people have tried to find criteria of what, of what we could share, what mm -hmm. we have in common that could ground our feeling mm -hmm. in solidarity with each other. And you know, language was one aspect, and culture was one aspect, mm -hmm. ethnicity is one aspect. And all of these criteria, of course, they excluded, either excluded too many or not enough people and none of these criteria work plausibly, I think. They also come with narratives, with the stories, with mm -hmm. fictions, to, just to solve a political problem. So the two things that follow from this for me, the one is that it, it must, since it has been possible to manufacture something of a, a solidarity amongst strangers, mm -hmm. amongst anonymous people, that's possible. That must be possible also for a bigger community, right? Um, the second thing is that I think what, sorry, this was very quick, but I think what works as a best criterion of grounding our solidarity is probably being subject to the same threats mm -hmm. um, po on the political level. And I guess, though this is now turning to Europe, I guess those are threats, these can be threats from kind of neoliberalism gone wild, right? What do you mean by that? Um, you know, we're now in competition to pay the lowest wages possible, mm -hmm. um, to be the m most attractive um, um, uh, location for industry. Mm -hmm. okay. um, we have trade agreements that don't really leave much autonomy to consumers anymore. Mm -hmm. So there's a threat f from here. There's a threat from terrorism. Mm -hmm. There are da environmental dangers. These are all threats that we cannot solve, we cannot respond to as nation states. Mm -hmm. So if you think that being subject of a threat is a good reason for us to extend mm -hmm. our solidarity, our preparedness to sacrifice, mm -hmm. because this also ex expands our dependence on others, right? Then we might think that we should be feel so solidarity with all of those with whom we have to respond to the threats okay. together. So that gets back in a way to the question about vulnerability. Yeah. So sharing specific types of vulnerability with others 
can be a sort of engine for solidarity or it creates the need for solidarity? It creates the need it and it can something. also be the engine. So if I think, if we think that national solidarity, the fiction of national solidarity has been relatively successful mm -hmm. and sometimes unfortunately so mm -hmm. and violently so. Um, but then, we, then one lesson that we can learn is that we can, through stories, make ourselves feel connected to other mm -hmm. people. And now we've got reasons to make ourselves feel connected. So I mean, I, I ask you a little bit of, a, of maybe what you think is a silly question now. So you, you talked about solidarity as something that is constructed, and you just used yeah. the term stories that we tell ourselves. Yeah. And I suppose those are stories that we tell ourselves about ourselves and about others. Yes. And those are stories that link us with, yeah. with other people. Do you not think that there is some kind of pre-political or even uh, quasi-organic component to, to solidarity? I, I simply share a tighter bond with those people who I speak the same language as or those people who live in my direct vicinity than I do with people who live on the other side of the country, the other side of the continent, or the other side of the world even. So I don't know whether I want to call it pre-political com community, but for other reasons. Um, so I think, yes, undoubtedly I have uh, um, a stronger emotional bond to people that I interact with more regularly because I know what is going on in their lives and I'm more involved, they've got more of an effect on who I am. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that that is reasonably restricted to language criteria, ethnicity criteria, mm -hmm. or nowadays even where they live. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't think that can be the basis of political solidarity. Okay. Um, that's just as, you know, that's, I guess I feel loyalty and f love mm -hmm. for my friends and, and I'm more, f yeah, I'm more mm -hmm. affected by what happens in my neighborhood. So let's talk about the European context for a moment <coughs> because you mentioned shared vulnerabilities and shared threats. And we can talk about that in terms of economics, we can talk about that in terms of environmental threat, threats from uh, terrorism, etc. And it seems that within Europe, in fact, there are quite a few shared threats. We do share threats with most other people living within the, what, the European Union, for example. Nonetheless, all this talk of a sort of European solidarity gets dismissed very quickly, often, oftentimes, or by, by most people, or let's say at least by mainstream political discourse. I think it gets dismissed pretty quickly. And it gets dismissed on the grounds of, oh no, that's not possible because there are, the cultural differences are too great. Mm -hmm. The difference between north, north and south, the difference between east and west, et cetera, the difference between you know, the way an Englishman lives his life and the way a French woman lives her life are just too different, in fact, for there to be the possibility of engendering these kind of relations, this fe these feelings of trust, of reciprocal, uh, reciprocal action that solidarity entails. What do you think about that kind of, that response? Uh, so, I think it kind of, so it's kind of fascinating because it's the same criticisms that were put forward to the project of national solidarity, mm -hmm. right? So area X cannot get on with area Y, they're too mm -hmm. far apart. They now we think they're the same, they're part of the same nation state. Mm -hmm. um, I do think, so I don't think this is per se a good argument, I do think that we need of course a sphere in which we interact as citizens of Europe or yeah. as, I would not necessarily even restrict it to citizenship, as people who live in Europe and mm -hmm. want Europe to, to work, so we need what Habermas would call a public sphere um, where we can debate, where we can, where we can have discourse about mm -hmm. what our interests are and that I think will build solidarity as mm -hmm. well. So it's not just the stories, it's also creating a sphere of interaction and communication. So that gets to you know, the, the million dollar question or the million euro question. Um, we've talked a lot about what solidarity is, a little bit about what solidarity is and what the possible boundaries of solidarity are. How do we generate solidarity? Because that seems to be the big, the big mystery. How do we in fact create these bonds where they don't already exist? <laughs> um, yeah, I would be rich if I knew the answer, but I've got, um, um, I guess, so, so if we think that interaction is important, then we need to create um, actively and maybe via the internet. This seems to be the most, most promising way. We need to create a sphere in which really Europeans can come together mm -hmm. and discuss the same issues. That would also require the press to 
to become more Europe focused and to interact with the public mm -hmm. sphere. Um, so I always thought that maybe it would be funny if we had, you know, these political talk shows, if we had them, um, if, if, if the different countries came together and organized one big political talk show mm -hmm. um, for their audiences, for the kind of local audiences to see. Um, I also think, given that I also think that stories are important, um, we have to tell the story about why we need each other mm -hmm. with, within Europe. What, at and least do you within think there's Europe. a good story to tell about why we need each other? I think there's a good story to tell, yes, because I don't think that um, Germany on its own can do anything about, uh, about lowering wage, uh, about wages getting lower and lower, um, about this race to the bottom. It, for example, mm -hmm. or France on its own. But I think Europe together is kind of, it's a combination of enough mm -hmm. states to actually have a bit of a response, a bit of an alternative mm -hmm. market here. Um, so I think, uh, I, also, I, th I think ultimately, I guess we need to work together globally, but maybe we're not at the stage mm -hmm. yet since mm -hmm. we have still problems with yeah. the European solidarity. But so I mean, I think you sidestepped my question a little bit, uh, quite, uh, quite neatly there, by going again. I mean, that happens all the time when we talk about solidarity. We go quickly from talking about how we might generate it to why it is we need it. But, actually. but I think the two go together. So this is the story we need that needs to be told. Yeah. Okay. So we need to tell a story about our shared vulnerabilities, about yeah. the shared about shared risk. Yeah. yeah. And we need to tell a story about the only way to address those vulnerabilities and to address those risks being some sort of transnational solidarity or is there something missing from the, from that picture um well for now it's the only way th so I, d I wouldn't want to stop with european mm -hmm. solidarity ultimately um so i think there are other stories to be told in addition to this yeah they're, they're kind of stories about how we've affected each other mm -hmm. um there are also there's responsibility and ac accountability in these stories I'm not so sure that um, they help, how much they help to build solidarity. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm sure that it is not the only story that has to be told about Europe as the one where, mm -hmm. we, where we have to work together in order to defend against the vulnerabilities. You, you talked about institutions being central to, I guess, maintaining solidarity and su supporting it. And solidarity, in fact, in a way manifesting itself through the function of certain types of institutions. For example, a, a, a tax system or a national health care system. What comes first, the solidarity or the institutions that support it? I think in the case of Europe it has to be the solidarity because the institutions have to be a response to demands of the citizens. I, I think if, if the European Union now impulsed those institutions, it would just alienate people. Because mm -hmm. It would not be, in a way, it wouldn't be a legitimate decision. Citizens, at least, and I would think anyone who lives mm -hmm. here hasn't been asked. So you, you think that, in fact, it really needs to be a sort of bottom-up type yeah. of bottom-up creation. Yeah. And that movement, so the, the, the movement that we talk about is the generation of solidarity, involves telling ourselves a certain story about ourselves and about our relations yeah. to certain others. If not all others. If not all others. Yeah. No. At least, is it necessary for it to move in these kind of, I mean, can we just move immediately to telling ourselves a story about all others, about I our shared vulnerabilities with everybody else? Or do we need, in fact, to move incrementally? Um, you know, we talk about you know, the local community, the national community, a sort of a core European community, you know, a larger European community, and then a global community. Is it necessary to think about it in those, in those ways? Or can we start, in fact, from the largest, from the largest scale, and work our way in. So I'm, I'm inclined. So um, this seems to me to be a practical question. So I'm inclined to, for myself, think about it in universal human terms, mm -hmm. um, because I think the universal, those vulnerabilities that we share. Sorry, it's going back to vulnerabilities yeah. again, that we share with all human beings mm -hmm. are actually the most pressing ones. Um, but it doesn't seem to work on a political level, right? Yeah. People seem to resist solidarity even with that within, within their, their nation, mm -hmm. with um, other groups. So, so I guess on a practical level it has to pro proceed 
So totally. Then, but then I wonder, I mean, if we talk about the practical level versus the ideal level, I wonder then if, in fact, we can talk about a solidarity that precedes its institutions, a, solitar- a solidarity that builds institutions rather than institutions building solidarities. Even so if you talk you, about the for, public sphere. For the you, something sphere. like the public sphere would be an institution, I right? suppose, yeah. yeah. I mean, but so even in a very concrete sense, that we need, I mean, the public sphere is a nice idea, but it has to be concrete as well. We, have, we actually have to have places where we go and talk yeah. to each other, yeah. and those places need to be institutionally structured. Yeah, so <clears throat> so maybe I want to distinguish between different kinds of institutions. Mm-hmm. So I think institutions that um, distribute taxes um, and institutions that uh, like a, a European health service, mm-hmm. something like that, that has to come after if we've actually. Uh, agreed to um, being a political community mm-hmm. and, and agreed to having the need mm-hmm. for those. But there might be more open institutions, let's call them more open, mm-hmm. that if the public sphere is an institution that we need in order to interact okay. together. Um, but I, I do think, so I think you don't think that the market, for example, is an institution, right? We had this conversation. I would imagine that, I mean, the market in a certain sense is an institution, but it's probably a, a collection of various institutions. And I, mean, I guess one of the things that we probably agree on in relation to the market as an institution is that it doesn't have its own specific aims. Yeah. It doesn't have its own specific goals. Whereas other institutions, uh, the tax system or the, the NHS, do have specific aims yeah. and specific go- <coughs> goals. They have a sort of institutional will or institutional volition. Mm-hmm. And one of the, I mean, and maybe we're, when we talk about certain institutions of the public sphere, institutions that involve debate and discussion, those institutions also have a goal, have an orientation. And perhaps yeah. we would say their goal and orientation is precisely the constitution of solidarity. Yeah. No, I th- so. I guess in, in that sense, yeah, I still think it's the need for solidarity mm-hmm. that drives the, 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 the institutions that then mm-hmm. solid, solidify mm-hmm. the solidarity. Yeah. Um, and I guess the need comes, yeah, c- can, can be environmental, mm-hmm. c- it could be illnesses that like yeah. provide the need yeah. for us to cooperate, right? Okay, yeah. Um, and to cooperate on, on a large scale and mm-hmm. in a stable way, in such a way that we need solidarity. So finally, I want to ask you what you think about a very sort of rather heretical, maybe even bizarre idea of solidarity that we find in the writings of the Czech philosopher Jan Patočka. Mm-hmm. So as you know, Jan Patočka uh, and his work are one of the focuses of this, of this project. In yeah. the way we, took our, we took our leave from three ideas that he puts forward, so solidarity, the good life of flourishing, that's not an idea that he put forward, but he discusses it, and care for the soul, which is another, sort of, of course, ancient Greek philosophical mm-hmm. idea. Patochka's idea of solidarity seems remarkably different from how you normally think about political mm-hmm. solidarity, because really it's a solidarity without identity. It's a solidarity of people who don't share anything, actually, or put it slightly differently, what they share is having the firm ground ripped from out under their feet, mm-hmm. or they share having, I mean, he calls it the solidarity of the shaken. Mm-hmm. So they share having been shaken of their identity, of their feelings of belonging somewhere. And he says that this is perhaps the kind of solidarity that we need to think about going forward, actually, beyond notions of national solidarity, or even a kind of European shol- solidarity, which would share certain things with n- ideas of national solidarity, i.e. that it's exclusive to a certain extent, and that it relies on certain markers of identity. So this idea of solidarity of the of the solidarity of the shaken. I know you haven't had much time to, to think about it, but I just wanted to get your. No, I, I I find it actually it reminds me also of uh, similar to to some extent similar to Hannah Arendt's ideas of, of solidarity, <coughs> and I think it's a it's a very um sorry it's a very careful vision of a cosmopolitan a universal solidarity. It's not 
so it might strike us very different from, from the political solidarity, but it's actually, it emphasizes that we have an experience of our vulnerabilities. Mm -hmm. And it emphasizes that we have an experience of our dependencies and it respects the ways in which mm. we are vulnerable and dependent. So I think it's not that different. It just comes, it is um, maybe a little bit more pessimistic and more cautious. And mm. There's some sadness to yeah. it, right? There's, this, um, uh, there's an experience of having gone too far with uh, energetic mm -hmm. solidarity in, bad, in a mm -hmm. bad, bad way. Um, so I don't think it's, so it doesn't seem to be heretic to me at all. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe I'm more optimistic. I also have had a different life from Patushka, yeah. luckily. Yeah. Um, and I think we can maybe go be a bit mm -hmm. more active. Do you see any, this is my, my final question to you, do you see any signs of new forms of solidarity emerging within the European political sphere? Or do you see rather a re retrenchment, a return to uh, reliance on older forms, national solidarity or even ethno-national solidarity, which seems to be rearing its head in the form of far-right politics in, mm -hmm. the, in the European sphere? So I, I have to say that I'm a little bit split. So I do see the rise in anti-European um, right, right-wing parties that, uh, t to me, are a threat on, on various levels, mm -hmm. right? Um, but I also see in the fact that they rise, and they rise on, the, on accounts, I think, and I'm not so sure what I believe about it, but if we think that part of their popularity is that they pick out um, a frustration that voters have with a system in which they don't feel like they're heard, then I'm kind of seeing in voters an eagerness to fight for their political autonomy. Mm -hmm. If that could be redirected, yeah. then that could be a source also of solidarity, because solidarity in the end will defend that political autonomy, okay. I think. Thanks, Dagmar. Thank you. <laughs> a pleasure speaking to you.